Hi, Mary Beth. I'm so glad you could join us today um, to talk about your upcoming programs that are both available as a one or a two day for speech language pathologist titled Strategies to Support Students with Reading and Language Deficits. So first off, can you explain what your presentation and course is about and kind of talk about the highlights that one would expect if they were to attend your course? All right, thank you very much. Happy to be here. Um, the course, whether it's a one day or two day, the big picture and that I want to highlight is looking from universal design from learning. When we look at first and foremost, how do we engage kids to learn? It's a very critical component, getting that buy-in or getting them hooked into learning will probably be one of my major focuses throughout the one day and definitely the two day. The other thing I want to talk about is looking at how do we address multiple means of representation. Into our doors, we have a wealth of learners that have different learning preferences. No two are ever the same. But again, when we look at multiple means of representation, what might that look like and how may we address the auditory, the visual, the body kinesthetic, or the combination of types of learners, which will be very critical for the takeaway when you leave from this training. The other thing I want to talk about is using language. And we as speech language pathologists, language is a very critical component. We can break that further down into what students are understanding, such as vocabulary or background knowledge, over to expressive language, what they're learning and how we hear and understand what they have learned. And last but not least, action is a critical thing. I will confess, I am a mover and a shaker myself, and I think kids need that opportunity to be able to move while they're learning, take part, get away from their desk, get away from the table, and again, be active and engaged learners. That's what my training will hopefully bring to your table. Yeah, sounds great. So then whom specifically does this topic address? We definitely would be addressing speech language pathologists and also speech language pathology assistants. We can also carry over into the world of special education. My background comes from autism spectrum disorder and so autism spectrum consultants. We can also look at reading specialists because I've worked with a wealth of reading specialists who have been great collaborators. And then last but not least, paraprofessionals because again, not only can we, we can't always be there, but we hand off many roles and responsibilities to paraprofessionals. And I do think that's critical that they are part of that knowledge and having that background information that we look at when addressing language and literacy with all learners. Yeah, hey, makes sense. So kind of big question, distance learning right now has been a huge focus. So does your topic address this or what, what does that look like for you? I'm glad you asked that. About the last eight years, most of my work has been through distance learning and then again, some on-site working in schools and also in a clinical setting. Distance learning, again, as we know, has become a major component for a variety of learners. And I've learned that it is a very different way of intervention planning. Mm -hmm. So I definitely will address distance learning and some of those same tools that I use ranging from no tech all the way to a level of high tech can be done in person and or via distance learning with all learners. Great. I mean, that is that's such an important focus right now as well and something that's extremely relevant. So if an SLP or a paraprofessional um, or special education teacher were to attend your course, you know, what are some immediate takeaways that they could implement right away? So some takeaways, number one would be some assessment tools. I will be talking about assessment because I firmly believe that a good assessment leads to good intervention. And so you'll be able to walk away with more informal tools that are free or little to no cost. In addition to assessment tools will be intervention tools. And those would be tools that will make you efficient, and effective because I know time is of the essence. I don't believe anyone has an abundancy of time available in the world of work. And so again, I wanna make sure that you can take part in activities, you can pre-make some things, more of a make and take opportunity, things you can use right from home because again, when we're maybe in our homes or in our offices, we don't have immediate um, availability to all tools. So I think it's going to be important that what we have 
quickly available to us, how can we put that to practice to be part of our intervention? And the same, whether we're seeing students in person or via distance learning, what do they have immediately available in their homes or at school for access to increase the engagement, um, the language in action, and again, how do we deal with multiple means of representation? Yeah, sure. So then the grade range for this is for K-12. So how does this impact kind of the full K-12 learners? Thank you, I appreciate you asking. When I walk through, I've created anywhere from 10 up to 15 effective learning strategies. And I will address looking from kindergartners where my background is all the way to high school. I've been with high school students for over 30 some years. But again, how do we not look like the bag carrier entering the building of a school every day? Mm -hmm. But again, how can we differentiate using two to three materials and address age range? What can, how may we use that in kindergarten? Mm -hmm. all the way up to our juniors and seniors in high school that, again, are looking to pour support in regards to literacy and language. Sure. That makes sense. And I really think um, the topic area is a great focus. You know, you're going to touch upon distance learning, grades mm -hmm. K through 12. I really think this is going to be a beneficial course for a lot of our speech language pathologists and, you know, special ed educators, paraprofessionals, et cetera. So we're really looking forward to this. Well, thank you for taking the time to um, discuss the course with us, and we look forward to seeing it this upcoming year. Thank you so much, and I hope to meet many of you out there. <laughs> Bye. Bye.